Hi, my name is Bruce Sands. I'm the chief of the Division of Gastroenterology at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And I'm talking about uh, a publication about vedolizumab in patients with Crohn's disease, published in Gastroenterology. Vedolizumab is an investigational agent that was recently approved for the treatment of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and it's a different biologic agent in that it targets alpha-4 beta-7 integrin. Um, therefore, it interferes with lymphocyte trafficking to the gut. In the Gemini 2 study, uh, this agent proved to be effective for induction and maintenance therapy in patients with active Crohn's disease who had failed other therapies. This study looked at patients who had prior treatment for their Crohn's disease who had moderately to severely active Crohn's. These were adult patients uh, between 18 and 80 years of age. They had Crohn's disease diagnosed at least three months, and they all had moderately to severely active Crohn's disease as defined by a CDAI between 220 and 400 at screening, and they also showed biologic indicators of inflammation, including an elevated C-reactive protein or colonoscopic findings of active Crohn's disease or a elevated fecal calprotectin of more than 250 micrograms per gram of stool. All of them had active disease in the ileum and or the colon. And all of them had inadequate response or intolerance within five years to an anti-TNF and or immune modulators and or corticosteroids. The emphasis of this study was on patients who had prior treatment with anti-TNFs, which comprised 75% of the treated population. The study design was very simple. It included a one-to-one -one randomization stratified for prior anti-TNF failure. Um, and patients were assigned to 10 weeks of active treatment and were given either placebo infusion at weeks 0, 2, and 6, or were given 300 milligrams infusion of vedolizumab at weeks 0, 2, and 6. The primary endpoint was at week 6, and a secondary analysis was done at week 10. The primary efficacy endpoint was clinical remission as defined by a CDAI of less than or equal to 150 at week 6 in patients who had had prior anti-TNF failure. However, predefined secondary endpoints included clinical remission at week 6 in the overall population, including both anti-TNF naive and TNF failure patients, and clinical remission at week 10 in the anti-TNF failure and overall populations. 416 patients were enrolled, including 315 patients who had prior TNF antagonist failure and 101 patients who were TNF antagonist naive. More than half of the patients had uh, corticosteroid use at the time that they were enrolled in the study. Uh, about one quarter to one third of patients were on concomitant immune modulators. And in the TNF failure population, all the patients had prior anti-TNF experience. And in the overall population, 75% had prior anti-TNF experience. The median CDAI for this population was moderately severe at roughly 314. The primary analysis was clinical remission, uh, or CDAI less than or equal to 150 at week six. And this was not achieved in the uh, primary efficacy population of the anti-TNF failure patients. 15.2% of patients assigned to vedolizumab achieved clinical remission at week six, as compared to 12.1% in the placebo-treated patients. In the overall population, however, 19.1% achieved remission at week six, as opposed to 12.1% uh, in the placebo-treated patients. However, looking at the secondary analysis at week 10, clinical remission was achieved in the TNF failure population in 26.6% of patients as compared to 12.1% of placebo-treated patients for a statistically significant difference. So thus, while the, uh, the study was uh, a failure in terms of its primary analysis, the secondary analysis was revealing in that uh, patients extended uh, on observation to week 10 actually achieved very good remission rates that were superior to placebo. So the take home message of this study is that uh, for patients with Crohn's disease and particularly for patients who had prior anti-TNF failure, there's a need to wait a little bit longer for patients to respond and remit. Probably patients should not be considered to have failed treatment until they've been followed out to at least week 10 if they have Crohn's disease and prior anti-TNF failure. 
The safety data also was consistent with the Gemini studies. No new findings were found, and to date, no cases of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML, have been observed. So that's the summary of the study, and I appreciate your listening.